what we have learned so far uh, regarding these uh, J operators, we have learned that the total angular momentum is denoted by J square operator. These are individual components of angular momentum. And now we are dealing with quantum mechanics. So these commutators, these components do not commute with each other, but they do commute with the total value of the angular momentum, which gives me this general commutation relation between the individual component and the total angular momentum operator. Classically, we can measure individual values of each component of the momentum operators quantum mechanically is not possible that is restricted by uncertainty principle and uh, this is the commutation relation of jx and jy likewise we can write the commutation relation of jy jz and jz jx we have already done this and this is the defining form, this is a definition of the commutation relation of the angular momentum. We have also defined the raising and lowering operators. These J plus minus operators will increase the value of M by one unit or decrease the value of M by one unit and they are defined by this. This is the commutation relation for Jz with J plus minus and this is the commutation relation between J plus J minus. As individual components of the angular momentum commutes with the total value of the angular momentum, here I am taking the Jz component that is the convention. So uh, this means I mean, Jz and J square equal to zero, the commutation relation between these two operators equal to zero, which means that Jz and J square have some common eigenstate and we can evaluate the values of Jz and J square simultaneously. These are the eigenvalue equation corresponding to J square and Jz. And as these J values and these M values are integers, they are quantized. So these two relations are extremely important because they give us the very important, which is the quantization relation of angular momentum values. These two relations are extremely important. We have also learned that these eigenstates are orthonormal, that means they are orthogonal and normalized. And to incorporate the property, we have uh, used Kronecker delta. We have also found the restriction of M values. We have also learned that M will be M must be between plus J to minus J and uh, between two consecutive values of M there will be a difference of 1 and for a particular J value M will have twice J plus 1 values. So for a particular J value we will get 2J plus 1 states. I have just discussed those states. We have also learned the eigenvalue equations for J plus and J minus. As J is discrete, J can take only discrete values and 2J plus 1 is integer and for a particular value of J, we will have twice J plus 1 number of eigenstates and twice J plus 1 number of M values. This J can go, I mean this J may take infinite number of values and for each value of j there will be twice j plus one values of m so we'll have infinite number of angular momentum states angular momentum eigenstates now we need to find out on these 
eigen states which will serve as the base state why we need this base state because i am not at all interested in these operators i am interested on the expectation values of this operators taken on this taken for these states because this expectation value will tell me the value of the physically measurable quantity for example in jm state the expectation value of jz will tell me the z component of the angular momentum and this is a definition of the expectation value we have learned in our operator uh, algebra of quantum mechanics that any term oij of this operator matrix can be written as this that is the expectation value of the operator itself within this ei and ej state this could be ei ei also then i will have oii which means uh, the diagonal components only so similarly here my best uh, states are jm states so i need to find out the value of these operators these operators in these states now one very important thing is when i am going to calculate the value of j square in these states this j square operating on jm will give me j into j plus 1 h cross square i am left with uh, this thing and this is this can be written like this this uh, inner product or scalar product now these are orthonormal so i have written this condition and by virtue of this orthonormality condition the expectation value of j square can be obtained from a diagonal matrix because if j is not equal to j prime this thing would vanish so for a particular state jm i can have the value of j square and j should be equal to j prime m should be equal to m prime i will construct j prime square matrix soon and for jz the thing is the same because even then the orthonormality condition stays there and this is also diagonal but this is not diagonal as m prime should be equal to m plus 1 so this j plus matrix will not be diagonal this thing would be diagonal similarly within the base states jm and j prime m prime the operator j minus will give me eigen values uh, like this but this condition needs to be satisfied satisfied that is j should be equal to j prime and m minus 1 should be equal to m prime uh, if m equal to 2 then m minus 1 that is 1 then m prime should be equal to 1 now we need to find out the matrix for j square that is the total angular momentum value square of the total angular momentum value hence this is an operator and as we have learned from our operator algebra uh, which uh, was in the series of uh, another i mean i made some videos on operators there we have learned that uh, any operator in quantum mechanics must be constructed in the form of matrices and now i need to construct this uh, j square operator so elements of j square can be found from jm and j prime m prime values because jm and j prime m prime are the base states just to recall this relation 
this thing tells me this condition tells me this chronic delta function tells me that uh, for j equal to j prime and m equal to m prime this value will be a non zero one so this j square must be a diagonal matrix because for other values for other combinations of j j prime and m m prime this thing would vanish now what if j equal to 0 and m equal to 0 and j prime m prime both are equal to 0 so we will get a diagonal matrix where all the elements are 0 now we need to find out for j equal to half and m equal to plus half minus half likewise j prime equal to half which gives me m prime equal to plus half and minus half but i need to satisfy this relation i need to satisfy this relation hence this matrix will be a diagonal one because for this one j equal to half j prime equal to half m equal to half m prime equal to half which satisfies the chronic deltas for this element j equal to half j prime equal to half that's okay but if this is to be non zero m prime should be equal to m but here for this element m prime is minus half and plus half i mean m equal to half and m, uh, m prime is equal to plus half and m equal to minus half so m not equal to m prime which gives this quantity which makes this quantity zero and similarly for this value j equal to j prime equal to half and m equal to m prime equal to minus half whereas the condition does not satisfy here because here m prime equal to minus half but m equal to plus half so this vanishes so we have a diagonal matrix similarly we can construct other matrices for other combinations of j and m I have just stated, I have just written what I have stated now that I need to satisfy these conditions. And uh, so all the matrices are diagonal matrix. Now the simplest base is the 0, 0 matrix. And in this base, the eigenvalue of J square and the, I mean, expectation value of J square and the expectation value of JZ, that means the total angular momentum will be 0 in this eigenstate and the z component of the angular momentum that will give me a zero because this jz will tell me the projection of the total angular momentum vector on the z axis and that projection is also equal to zero in this base vectors in the base states zero zero j plus will give me zero because in order to get a non-zero value m prime should be equal to m plus 1 but here m prime equal to m so this will give me 0 similarly for j minus we will get 0 also for j equal to half our best state is like this uh, these base states we have already found in our previous video these are the basis states for uh, different different values different different combinations of uh, j m so here is the combination and this is the matrix for any operator uh, if o is equal to j square or jz or j plus or j minus we just uh, need to put that operator and find out the uh, corresponding uh, matrix for that particular operator for example if we need to find out the matrix j square for this base we need to construct it like this now we know that for j equal to j prime and m equal to m prime these values are non-zero otherwise uh, all the elements are zero Th that is for this thing m is not equal to m prime because m equal to minus half here m prime equal to plus half here so this matrix element will be equal to zero similarly this matrix element will be equal to zero and uh, we have a diagonal matrix and diagonal matrix the elements of the diagonal matrix can be found by using the relation of 
like uh, this one. So I have just <coughs> used the relation and uh, I found the matrix elements, the diagonal elements for J square matrix and J square turns out to be like this. So the J square matrix for, uh, for the basis half half, I mean J equal to half and M equal to half, M equal to plus minus half will be like this. Now we need to construct the matrix for JZ also. The basis is like this. It is uh, J half M equal to plus half and J equal to plus half M equal to minus half. And similarly, I have used the this relation to find out the matrix JZ. This tells me, this condition tells me that this matrix will also be a diagonal matrix. So the matrix come out to be like this. And uh, JZ is half H cross 1 minus 1. All the other elements are 0. And we define this as sigma Z. This is Pauli matrix. Now we are going to construct J plus and J minus. So for J plus, I have just used the relation, this one. Now from this condition, we can see that this is not going to be a diagonal matrix and applying this relation, I have evaluated the matrix J plus like this. All the elements are zero except this one is H cross. For J minus, I will have H cross here, all the other elements are zero. Now as J plus and J minus are Hermitian conjugated to each other, so if I make a Hermitian conjugation of J plus, that is this row becomes column. So then it will be zero H cross and zero zero, and that is nothing but J minus. And from J plus J minus, I will be able to construct J X. And J X is now like this. This is again a non-diagonal matrix. Diagonal elements are zero. And this we defined as another Pauli matrix, which is a sigma X. And similarly, we have written the matrix J Y. By definition, J Y can be constructed from J plus and J minus using this relation. And this JY turns out to be H cross by 2. Diagonal elements are 0. This is minus 1, minus I. This is plus I. And this is defined as sigma Y. This is another Pauli matrix.